Hello, welcome to Parent Playhouse. Hold on, let me just play this over here. I'm gonna watch our stream on this side just so I can see how the Wi-Fi is working, which I probably won't be able to figure it out how to do that. But it's so good to see you guys. And look, 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 look who's here. There's Victoria Cockatoo. Yay. Hi, Birds, Rebecca and Maria. Doris above is here. Rhea, what does it mean to put her down? Okay. Uh, Bubba the Bird, people want April to put her down. Oh, and have made your comments. Bubba the Bird, I'm going to need you today more than ever to be a moderator. Any comments that um, have to do with putting her down, like saying that I should put her down, you'll be blocked, deleted, gone. Did you get that, Bubba the Bird? Thank you. I, I can't deal with that. So there's a lot of people saying that they want to see her euthanized, and that's a bunch of crud. So we will not hear that here at Parrot Playhouse. It's negative energy, and I don't want to get upset. Then Victoria feels it, and it's really upsetting. So, um... That's not going to happen to my Victoria. Um, Kathleen, hello from Pennsylvania. Hello, hello. Uh, simply Kazi Roblox. My cockatoo absolutely loves your videos. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Shaheen Joseph, my yellow crown Amazon watches your videos. Oh, that is so cute. I love that. Achu is here. It's so nice to see everyone here. Pointless Pictures is here. Hello to you. To you. Okay, so let's see. Sandra, hello. So Sandra says hello to Victoria. Susan, hello, April and DC. Good to see you both looking well. Thank you so much. Uh Greta's here. Hello. So good to see you again. It's so good to see you. Um, Flock Friends is here. Look at Victoria. Woo! Yeah, wow, right? Yeah, and Flock Friends has a YouTube channel. Parrot education as well, like we have. Um, Mary C. Hi, April. Thank you for all you do. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for all you guys do, treating your babies well. And Cheryl Kincaid is here. I'm here. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate if you can moderate. Thank you. Thank you. So Katie's here, uh, Mel's here, hello. So Victoria's here, yay! <laughs> bueno, and sorry, Thomas, how rude of me. Thomas is down here. I don't wanna like move the camera too much because the Wi-Fi gets kind of weird. Okay, I'm able to watch this right here. There's Thomas, hello, hello. Thomas is here, and who else is here? Jesse's eating. There's the puff man. Uh oh, we got baby locked in the cage. We gotta get baby out of there. And we've got Quinn. He's hiding. He's right there. And where did little Maui go? Little Maui's over there. He's oh, we got a dinosaur. Oh, scary, scary. So we're oh 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 oh. It's okay. Let's. When Jesse's eating, sometimes he gets a little bit of bitey. So we gotta be careful. But I think Victoria wants to stand. So I might have to give her the stand. Let me get um let me get baby out of the cage. Bueno, well, because there's no reason for him to be locked up. He should be enjoying himself. So you want to sit on my shoulder? She has been really um antsy today. So I'm just gonna try to keep her calm. So for those of you that were watching the live stream last week, we had it before we got really sick. Hey, Ellen, hey, hey, hey. And it was, oh, is Bulldog here? Hey, Bulldog, I missed. Oh, Falcon Sue's here, hey. Let's go to the Bulldog, hey, hi guys. Hey, Nina's here, there's so many awesome people here. And, it, it, and for those of you, if you see that you get your comment deleted and you've given me beautiful emojis, it's because we're only allowed, I think, three emojis. YouTube rules, YouTube rules. So um, it's so nice to see everybody here. But so the last time we were here last Sunday, Victoria got sick, right? She vomited. And that pretty much set how the whole week went. And it was really scary as many, many of you saw. Thank you so much for all your positive thoughts and prayers. They really made a difference. And it was just so weird because I had been, since that Sunday, she got sick. Um, 
Oh, you're up at 1.35 a.m. Thank you. That's awesome, Belle. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, that'd be no bueno being up that early in the morning. But since that Sunday, I had been looking for an exotic vet, an avian vet, anybody that had a Lupron shot because she was so uh, hormonal. And when she gets hormonal like that, she does look better. Thank you, Skittles. Um, her tummy hurts really bad and she gets nauseous and she doesn't feel well at all. And so it's really scary because she, she just started vomiting and that was something new for Victoria. Um, anytime my birds do something new like that, it concerns me. If they're not, you know, some people were like, well, that's normal for her, for birds to regurgitate when they're hormonal, but um, that's not normal for her. So that was really concerning. I weighed her and she had actually gained 20 extra grams. And so that was concerning for me as well. Cause I was like, did she swallow something? Um, is, are things not able to move through her body like they should? Uh, those things were going through my mind. And then she was really, really hot. Like she was hot to the touch. And so like all these scary things were coming through my mind. And that's where I had to become a detective. And her, she wasn't pooping that much. But then she had gained a lot of weight. So then I was like, is it egg yolk building up in her body, even though she's had a hysterectomy? So... I didn't know, I just wanted a vet to look at her and that was not a possibility. It was no bueno, that's right, Cheryl. Uh, there were no veterinarians available. Like in San Diego, the earliest was when Dr. G, she was out of town, was coming back and I already made an appointment with her before this happened um, to get a implant for Victoria Cockatoo and a Lupron shot. Hey, bird lady speaks. Hey, hey, yes, prayers do work. Okay, look at the little nugget. Prayers do work. Bird lady also has a, a YouTube channel as well. And um, so, you know, I was I was getting pretty desperate, and then you guys were just like, whoa. I mean, seriously, you could feel the love. DC strong. That's right. Uh, you could feel the love coming from everybody. Messages, and I was just kind of. She was. She gotten so bad to where she was trying to rip her belly open one night. And I, I put a post out saying, you know, please pray. Um, Victoria is trying to like mutilate herself. And this is not something she does. Um, even though she's naked, this happened before I rescued her. And something tells me, I mean, she was almost starved to death, but something tells me, cause she has ovarian disease. We think she was used as a breeder bird um, because her uterus was so uh, scarred and damaged like a bird that had been bred over and over and over how, you know, some of these breeders do. Hello, 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 Alice. And so she, she was, what happens is her ovary that's still there, you can't remove an ovary. Hey, Grenar. Hey, Sandra. It's 2, uh, 38 in Spain. Oh my gosh. We're so happy to have you here. That's so amazing. Victoria, they've come to see you. Yeah, they have baby girl. She's such a precious baby girl. I love her so much. And I know everybody does too. Um, but her ovary that could not be removed, you know, they can't remove ovaries and birds because they'll bleed to death. It's next to an artery and they will bleed to death in seconds. So that's the question I get a lot, you know, when birds have hyster uh, partial hysterectomies, they can't have a full. So that ovary starts to twist and it starts to hurt and it causes her pain. And that's what was going on. She must have been in terrible pain. Um, she could barely stand. She was screaming. And it was just all, you know, my mom and I, if it wasn't for my mom, oh my gosh, I could not, like, I don't think I could have kept her going. Um, my mom and I were just, like, trying to keep her from hurting herself. And um, I messaged Dr. G, poor Dr. G. She was out of town. She's getting all these messages from me. And she said, you know, um, Medicam. Uh, I needed Medicam. And so I went uh, to All Pets, Dr. Lattice's office, um, and we got some Medicam. They got it ready real quick for us. And then I raced back. 
And the whole time my mom was struggling with Victoria, trying to keep her from hurting herself. And I, it was like an hour and 40 minute drive round trip. And then I gave her the Medicam and I gave her some gabapentin um, to relax her a bit more and help. What? 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 <laughs> and, and then she just, she fell asleep like 45 minutes later. And then the miracle happened. The next day we got in for a Lupron injection. That was because of you guys. So it was just so intense um, how things were going. And it, it was just so scary. I, it, one minute she was doing good. And then all of a sudden, the next minute she was doing bad. It, you know, it was up and down. So this is what I'm going to have to do to prevent this from ever happening. You know, I got all we can do is best. I do. I have the Medicam. I have a nice big bottle. What happened was, this was the worst timing. What happened was the Medicam that they had given me um, before, it wasn't real Medicam because it's hard to get medications right now. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but like antibiotics, certain medications, um, it's really hard to get. A lot with the... Uh, um, you know, pandemic going on, above of the bird, only three emojis. We have to remove posts with more because YouTube hates emojis, apparently. I know. I love emojis. Thomas just said no bueno to that, too. We love emojis. But yes, the YouTube bot will come on here and they've deleted entire channels. It's so, it's so bizarre. But yet they'll let those horrible comments that I should kill Victoria Cockatoo stay on here. So go figure why that happens. Go figure. I have no idea. <laughs> Arch uh, Yeomans. Hello. Hi. How are you? So, so yes. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is Victoria has to have a, a Lupron shot. We're thinking probably every three months, believe it or not, you guys. That's pretty wild. And then she has to have an implant every six months um, to keep this from happening. And I did not someone said you should kill her oh yes you yes there's been a lot of um stuff going on we're gonna call them haters just really unstable people that we pray do not have children or pets uh, because it, god forbid if their children or pets get a cold we know what's gonna happen um i yes lately i've been called selfish i've been called an animal abuser i've been uh threats Threats have been placed on me. Um, emails have come in. Some of you have seen uh, some of the stuff that's been happening on YouTube, and also some on Facebook. So um, it's been it's been terrible. I almost don't even want to look at my email. I've missed a lot of emails. Honestly, you guys, it's really upsetting to go onto my email right now and see <laughs> what these people are sending me. It's just, it's crazy stuff, but it's, it's just, you know, it, I mean, it's ridiculous, but still it's, it makes me upset. You know, when you're tired and you're worried about your loved one, right, Thomas? Yeah? Yeah, bueno, bueno. And you see that stuff happening, even though um, there's a lot of good stuff happening, it does get to you. It does get to you a bit, and then you start wondering, am I doing the right thing? But, of course, I'm doing the right thing. She looks happy to keep, uh, to me, keep her as happy as you can for as long as you can. That, that is my plan. That is my plan. That is my plan. So, she's going to get her implant on um, Friday, and, and Dr. G is going to do it. Uh, this is the first time Dr. G is gonna do Victoria's implant. And so we're gonna, it's gonna be a place in Claremont where we're gonna go. And then um, Dr. G is gonna do whatever she feels she should do um, to make sure Victoria is, you know, doing well. I don't know if she's gonna wanna do x-rays. I know she wanted to do, um, they're a special, they're like a digital x-ray, I'm saying it wrong. Um, but it's basically like a video x-ray where the bird doesn't have to be sedated or um, anesthetized, anesthetized with anesthesia. And they just, look how relaxed she is. This is, you guys, this is so nice to see. Oh, I'm so happy. And you can just see what's going on inside the bird as I described in one of uh, the videos. 
Um, you can see how the organs, everything just is lying how it would be with your bird standing up, like how Thomas is right now, instead of scrunched lying down in an x-ray. And then there's no risk. You don't have to put the bird to uh, sedate them or anything. Oh, sorry, baby girl. So that's just fantastic. So I'm really, um, I'm excited to see that she's the only one that has this type of imaging here in San Diego and I think in LA. So um, this is what she had up north in San Francisco at the bird hospital. So yeah, I'm excited. She just got it. She actually drove here one night and showed it to me. <laughs> it was like 10, 1030 at night. We're looking at it. We're going, oh my gosh, this is so cool. You know, uh, this is what us bird people uh, show each other and we get excited about. Um, Victoria has a good quality of life and is loved by her. Yes, Victoria. Hi, Ellen. Victoria is so loved by so many. Hi, Grenar. I love her mouth chatter movement. I know. I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Bur oh, bueno. Uh, Bur Bur Thomas wants to get in the video. I'm, s I'm sorry, Bird Rebecca. Her volume's not working. Well, she can at least watch how cute uh, Victoria is right now. And Jesse, is that good? Wow, we're having good reception today. I have the router in here. Been working on my wife, my internet, you guys. I'm trying. Is that good? Huh? And then once he's done, I stuck a whole cabbage there. Um, I like to use natural uh, foraging foods, toys, uh, uh, natural f uh, food, sorry, and turn it into a foraging toy. And so I'll give my bird. Thomas is scary. If I can get a deal on like cabbage or things that they can shred, sweet potato after I've washed it, of course, I just put it in their cage and I let them have at it. Um, the unfortunate time was when I did a whole wall, oh, a watermelon and I left it in Jesse's cage. Oh my gosh. My mom was talking about it today. We were actually cleaning up the watermelon. There was juice like running down on the floor. At first I was like, what, what spilled when I got home? I mean, and then all of a sudden I'm like stepping in some like sticky stuff. He just dejuiced the whole watermelon. It was incredible. And there was watermelon on the walls. I got these curtains, like, there's like watermelon in the curtains. I'm going to have probably have to get new um, curtains or something. I don't know. We got to get that. I guess I could wash it, but there's metal in the curtains. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do. <laughs> no bueno. No bueno. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do about the curtains because they are so full of watermelon. Right, tell me? Yeah. Do you want a, a little goodie? I hate to put up shower curtains. I know. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is a good idea. I would put up shower curtains, but um, they wouldn't breathe too well. Oh, Jesse's over here doing a dinosaur sound. Oh, look at everybody. Uh-oh, so much for quiet, you guys. They see the Nutriberries. We're going to give them a Nutriberry because they're being so good. I like to reward my birds when they're quiet like this. Although birds scream and that's fine. But when they're quiet like this is when I like to whip out the treats. Do you want that? Or, you know, he is so busy working on his quinoa that I cook for him. And everybody, the sweet potatoes, um, peas. We have a little bit of corn, carrots in there. And, oh, I did the Christine Chop Shop Super Greens. Um, he doesn't even, he doesn't even want that mixed in there. So, um, I would bring the camera, but the problem is it will, something will happen to the Wi-Fi. So I like to give my birds treats when they're quiet like this and nice and good. This is when I reward them versus when they're screaming. Um, and I know sometimes it's like, you're so desperate. I'll let you watch her eat her Nutriberry. She's so cute. Why well, I give my birds a treat? Cause they've been so good. Um, versus when they're screaming, that's when... Um, you know, I will admit I've been guilty of that, um, where sometimes you are just like, dear Lord, help me get through this tough time. You can't see Victoria, can you? And I, I'm just going to give them whatever they want. You guys, I think no matter what anybody says, sorry, that is the thing. So you can see her that was moving. No matter what anybody says, I think everybody has been there. I, I don't care what a professional animal trainer, you know, those animal trainers say they haven't. Trust me, everybody who's been there, when you're desperate and you've got like a Zoom meeting or something going on, there have been times where 
you know, I'm sure. What's wrong? Howie, what happened? Huh? You, oh, 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 yeah, so I actually made a video on that, and um, ten I think it was 10 things birds uh, hate about their human or something like that. I, I forget all these titles, um, but I had, like, where uh, Thomas, we were acting, and he, he, I was like, scream, Thomas, scream for this video, and he's like, okay, so he starts screaming, and I run over, and I give him all these, um, I'm like, here, take as many seeds as you want, you know. So just trying to show people of what not to do. And then I did a reenactment of what you should do. So I'm going to be doing more videos like that. The Zoom meetings are when I break out the Nutriberries. Oh, Nutriberries are great. Especially if you can get those, um, those foraging toys where you can put the treats in. That's how a lot of our toys are designed like this one right here, you can put treats inside of them. And that's when your Nutriberry lasts longer and your bird stays busy and happy and ha everything. So it's just awesome. That's when you do it. So if you've got something going on, hey, Feather Flock, Feather Flock is here who also has a YouTube channel. Hi. So if you know you've got like some stuff, guests coming or you've got meetings or, you know, something important where you want your birds, you know, you really don't want them to be screaming bloody murder, right? But birds scream, they're wild animals, so, you know, we can't, you know, all we can do is our best. That's where you sit down and you plan the foraging toys for it, right? And that's what I do. I plan the foraging toys when I go to work, if I'm going to be gone, whatever. And I, I don't want them going crazy here or bored because what are they going to do? They're bored. They're going to scream. Uh, I would too. Um... That's where you plan the toys for the day. So I'll plan like twice a week, I'll plan the toys for the entire week. And that's what I do. And that way they're ready to go for each day and I just whip them out, they're done. And there we go. And I plan what they're gonna eat as well. Look at, she's trying to get nesty. Do you guys see that? So I'm really hoping, this is where foraging toys work as well, but she is not, I don't think she is gonna, you want to chew on some wood? You want to chew on some wood? I don't think she's going to chew on anything. She, is, oh, there we go. Or she's going to, what's she going to do? Yeah, so this is what I'm doing. Um, So I've just been trying to keep her super busy. I'm glad that she's not trying to tear open her chest. So that tells me that she is not in pain like she was. That was, oh, there's nothing worse than seeing a Victoria cockatoo in pain. Just got my Conyer, a huge flight cage. Now I'm anxiously awaiting its arrival. Oh, how exciting. Oh, that's great. I can't wait to you, for you to post that. Um, yeah, and then make sure with the flight cage. Oh, is that for inside or outside? Um, when you guys have your flight aviaries outside, make sure there's something that's over them because those hawks, they wait for those birds to be hanging on the aviary and they'll just go through and they'll stab them with the talons so um definitely just be careful bob a huge cage oh sure everybody's getting their birds a big cage oh, that's awesome cheryl a sue a falcon sue april can you describe the implant a little more are the old ones removed so th that's that's a good question um so now with the implants sorry you guys you're crooked the so the implants Oh, somebody gave me a super chat. Sorry, hold on. I'm so behind with this. I don't even know who gave me a super chat. I, I'm scared to like, look, does anybody? Oh, Susan Ingalls. Our flock is so happy to see Victoria feeling better. Thank you so much, Susan. That is so sweet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it means a lot. There you go, look, Victoria. So, uh, thank you. Um, so, the implant so one time she did have to have the implant removed i wish i had a picture normally you don't normally the body absorbs the implant um but basically what it is i like to have my birds sedated because they're big when they go in and they do have to make a little incision and push them in some vets don't give nothing no painkillers nothing they just shove those implants in dr loudest always um 
he put her under it. And he, every time we got an implant, he put her under, it was a very light dose of anesthesia. And then she would wake up and, and she was fine. Um, but you know, she is 49 years old and going under, you know, anything can happen, right? So um, basically what Dr. G is gonna do, it's like the size of a, a little, I wanna say it's bigger than a, a, a rice. It's bigger. And she's gonna give Victoria pain meds. So she's gonna inject her with this. It's a really nice pain med. It works so well. She had that when she was the bubble bird, when she had that surgery complication when they were looking for cancer. And then she's gonna insert it. And the, the needle for the pain med is a little bit big, um, but it sure is, what? oh, hold on, hold on. The dinosaur's loose. The, the needle for the pain med is kind of big. You, you want your, you want that? Um, but once it's in, yeah, Jesse's like, I'm here. Once it's in, it does numb the bird and help with the payments. So, okay, so what I was saying, sorry guys, I get distracted. I think I have like uh, my attention. It's, I think it's because I'm in a room full of birds is what it is. So she did have to have one removed and it had to be surgically removed because her body was like rejecting it for some reason. Dr. Loudis has never seen that before. And so I noticed it, so I took her in. He said, that is very weird. And so he removed it and then he put another one in. Normally you would not. So that answers part of the question. And then, so this um, implant, when you put them in, it releases hormones that keeps the, um, the all those little, Hormone, hormone levels going crazy. And so it slowly releases things to help. I forget what the actual technical term is. I've made a video on it though. Sorry, you guys, I'm not explaining it well. Versus the Lupron injection, when you put it in, the body absorbs it real quick and it only lasts like a month. But the implant is gonna last for six months, we hope. And then she'll have to have another one. And why can't I remember the name I made? So. Do you guys ever get like when you're doing anything live or whatever your brain goes blank? Like one time I could not remember what ginger was. I was looking at ginger and I couldn't remember what the name of ginger was. So it's the um what is the name? Oh, thank you, Kathy. Thank you so much for the super chat. You guys, did you watch my uh not this last video, the previous video? What is the name of the implant? Somebody help me here. Um, subscribe and hit that bell. Yes, please. That's great. Thank you. So anyways, I hope I answered the question, but I really didn't. <laughs> no, it's not an IUD. Um, that floor, ugh, why can't I remember it, you guys? I've heard it so many times. I can't remember. No, no. Okay, not Lufron. Uh, but Lufron does have an implant, actually. Um, I'm going to ask Dr. G about it because what can happen with the implant that she's getting or anything that a bird gets, their body can become used to it. And so it's like, it's good to switch back and forth. So I'm going to find out about the Lupron implant and see how that works. And even though she does get a lot, she's going to be getting more and more Lupron injections because we didn't have access to Lupron, but now we are. Um, I'm gonna find out about that because I had no idea. I had no idea. I have canaries and lovebirds, only one lovebird, but I'm getting a cockatiel soon. Well, congratulations. Um, this can also happen in humans. Tolerance disorders suck. I agree. Can anybody Google what the name of the implant is? It di 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 Dysmorian. Oh my gosh, you guys, why did my brain do this to me? Um, Umbrella 2, we just want to send our love to VC on behalf of Baby the Umbrella and Jake the Cockatoo. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for that super chat. And guess where that's going to go? <laughs> that's where it's going to go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Umbrella 2. That is such a cute name. I love that. She is a fighter. Yes, yeah, she is. I... I have never seen a bird. Well, you know, I don't want to say that. Bailey was a fighter. You, you know, birds are fighters as long as they have something to fight for. If you give them a lot of love, if you give them something to fight for, they're going to fight. And, you know, it's about, it's 
you got to know when it's time to let them go. But the thing is, because animals will, or, or anybody will just keep going and going, right? Because sometimes a bird will keep going for their person, even though they're suffering. And Bailey, my kayak, she, she, she was old. It was time for her to go. We had been through a year battle. She had heart disease um, and fatty liver. She, she was fed seed uh, by her previous owner who absolutely, absolutely adored her, gave her a wonderful life, but Bailey ate a lot of seed. And so that's eventually what took her, but I had to help Bailey go at the end. Um, I had to take her in for that. So it's, it's good to know when it's time. For Victoria, it's just not time as I've been telling, you know, I try to let people know, um, doll roll loop my, nope, that, that's not it. Oh, da, thank you very much. Does Lauren, bueno, does Lauren, does Lauren. So it's a does Lauren implant. We got it, you guys. Oh my gosh. And I made a video and I spelled it out and I wrote a sentence about it. And then I couldn't remember how to pronounce it or say it. Isn't that wild when that happens? Ah, thank you so much. But you know what? I always know with flock power, somebody's going to have it. Somebody. Yes, Lupron is used in humans. And I also think Deslorian is also used in humans. I could be wrong. Um, a lot of the things that they use in humans, they use in birds. And Lupron is super expensive. And it's gone way up in price since the pandemic. Um, and it's hard to get. So basically when a vet has to order it, it costs a vet thousands of dollars because they can't just order like a few shots. They have to order a vial and then they um, can't put, you, you know, they dilute it. So there's different dilutions of what they put in that syringe. So they get like a human dose and then they dilute it. And depending on the bird, uh, depending on the size of the bird, they'll dilute it a little bit more and a little bit more. So I want to say um, for them to order, it's like something like $13,000 for like a small amount. And um, it's super expensive and it goes bad after a while too. Um, it, you put it in, they put it in the freezer and cause I've given one to Victoria here, Dr. Lattice gave me one here to give it to her. It was the last one that he had because he wasn't going to carry it anymore. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I was just waiting for when do I give it to her? Because there's certain times if you give a bird um, the Lupron shot and if they're like already in a certain cycle of their ovulation, it's not going to work. It, it, you're, you're not even going to see a difference. And in fact, I'm not sure how much it's going to work for Victoria, but I had to try. Um, so, you know, that's why it was such an issue getting the Lupron. I hope VC isn't getting too excited. She's sticking her rump up. I know. So I'm going to put her up here. You know, I'm going to put her up here. When I'm filming sometimes, I got to say, I do get distracted on, on uh, trying to figure out names of implants. <laughs> I know. Look, she is getting, you see? Okay, so let's see. What will she, do you want a piece of wood? Oh, jeez, Jesse. Good Lord. I startled him, so he like tried to bite me. Sorry, Jess. See? Okay, let's see. Do you want? No? Do you want to go up in the tree? Let's see. Let's see if she'll go up in the tree. She'll probably start to scream. You gonna do up there? Do you want a piece of wood? Oh, the wild parrots are flying over. Whoa, the wild parrots. I hear them. I hear them. Thomas. Yeah, they get excited. They get excited when the wild parrots fly over. Whoa, it's so exciting. So we've got wild lilac crown amazons just like thomas and then we've got um uh, mexican redheads here and then we've got cherry headed conures here and they they live in the canyon and they fly over cert like in the morning they do the flyby like as soon as the sun comes up so nobody sleeps in in this neighborhood because once they do the flyover um all my birds are going crazy like they're so excited and then at night, at this time, um, they're flying over right now. So it's just so cool, you guys. And sometimes they'll like stop and they'll say hello to my birds. Don't they, Thomas? And it's just, it, it's like, it's the best. It's the best seeing them in the wild like that. We, we love it. We love it. We're so thankful for it. 
Okay, umbrella cockatoo. Let's see, what do we got? Hi, glad to see VC is better. Greetings from Brazil. Oh my gosh. Hello. What time is it in Brazil right now? I love seeing what time it is everywhere. I can't believe it how some people watch and it's like three in the morning, two in the morning. It's wild. Oh, Bob K is here. He said, hi, VC. Hello. Somebody asked, what does VC stand for? It's Victoria Cockatoo. Yes, it's for Victoria Cockatoo. I just love how it sounds. Do you have Amazon parrots? Yes. You're looking at one right now. Okay, Steve Short, it's 2 a.m. in the UK. Holy smokes. Oh, that's, yeah, bueno if, bueno if you like to get up early, Thomas. Yeah, or, yeah, bueno, or stay up late. Yeah. So this is at Amazon. He's a lilac crown. And then, oh, well, look at that. And there's another Amazon. And that's a little bit of a nesty thing going on back there. You see how baby's preening the back of Puffy's little tail feathers? Yeah. So that's a yellow nape Amazon. And then Quinn is also a lilac Amazon over there. Uh, Bob K, six here on the West Coast. Six o'clock, huh? Yeah. And 10, oh, 10 p.m., 10.05 in Brazil. Wow, that's so cool. Oh, my gosh. I've always wanted to go to Brazil. It'd be so neat to go to Brazil and see all the parrots flying free. I bet you see many parrots flying free. Um, 14 rain, 14. Hey, April, my uh, Myers parrot just went to bed. It's 9, 8, 9 p.m. here. I'm so glad VC is looking better. And of course, hi, Thomas. Thank you so much. What is it, princess? What is it? So, you know how when a bird's screaming and you don't want to encourage the screaming, but when they're nesty like this, like Victoria is, sorry, Thomas, if you just let them scream and scream, it will encourage the screaming. And also, let me tell you something else. Hold on just a second. I want to get her. You know what she's screaming about? She's watching us on the TV. She gets scared when she sees other cockatoos. I don't think she realizes that, Victoria, that's you, that that's her. Um, so I've learned a lot. You know, I, I see Don Scott. We've hung out a lot. Um, he is the cockatoo whis whisperer. He's um, the founder of the Chloe Sanctuary, and he lives with cockatoos, like 12 cockatoos. And right now he has one really sick cockatoo, Bob. It, it's it, Babalu. It's 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 not looking good. Um, sadly, Babalu does not know who Don is right now. They think it's a um, a brain tumor or dementia. Um, so it's just something's not right. And when he sees Don, he tries to attack Don. So Don's tried a bunch of things, trying to help Babalu, but just no luck. So we will see what is going to be happening probably in the next week or two um but poor don he just says it's like my bird has been taken by aliens you know and um, when bob blue sees him he just just freaks out in his cage and don really i don't think don can even get him out of the cage now so you know let's see so they've done x-rays they've done a lot the only other thing is an mri and that's like thousands of dollars and you know what what would it do right if there's a brain tumor which it's kind of looking like there could be um i've seen cockatoos do that before why did i go off on this tangent oh i know why so when a cockatoo like victoria is in the situation you don't want them screaming like this because she will just escalate into just a frantic scream and you see how she's just looking for somewhere to nest just in a panic and this is what these cockatoos do I'm going to actually, like right now, she's not even food motivated is what's just wild. She just wants a box and she just wants to put her head in a box and chew. And, and that's why, you know, I see a lot of people do that because their bird will stop screaming, sort of. But um, the problem is it increases that nesting behavior. And for females, you know, it can make them want to produce eggs which is not good for captive birds because they can get egg bound and, you know, they don't have the muscles to push out those eggs. And they, a lot of them don't get enough sunlight. So it's why you don't want to encourage it. And you just want to keep them as busy as you can. But 
right now because you know we're looking at the camera i'm limited with what i can do with her and she is just not interested in food do you want that you want to chew that that's one of those cardboard um cones honey cones um for birds so when a bird is screaming a lot like that they can get a prolapse and it's when basically the insides of their reproductive area pushes out of the bottom. And you'll see that in cockatoos where they're prolapsing. And when they're prolapsing, um, you can actually see it's like a big bump on their bottom. And it, you can see it just kind of starts coming out and they have to have it surgically put back in. And you'll see birds that scream, they'll, they'll break those stitches and it'll come back out. And you know, cockatoos, a lot, no, it's okay. Cockatoos, sadly, that takes a number of cockatoos' lives. Um, they die because of prolapses and also not getting enough moisture in their food. So, you know, birds that don't get enough um, vegetables and fresh fruit, they don't get enough moisture in their food, and that can also cause a prolapse as well. So you don't want to just feed your parrots pellets, right? You want to give them a nice, well-rounded diet, and you want to give them more vegetables than fruit, um, especially when they're like what Victoria is right now. She's sitting quite nicely. She's sitting, oh, no, now she's not. Now she's, hey, you just sit there, okay? I'm going to pet your head. I'm going to pet your head. So that's why it's important to give your birds a well-rounded diet. And then for those of you that, you know, you haven't seen the videos of where to pet and not pet your bird. Um, as you see, I, I'm really careful how I pet Victoria. I have to be, I can't pet her back. I can't pet underneath there. I can't pet her belly. All I can do is pet her head because that gets her really excited as well. So I gotta be so careful. I honestly, I don't even like her sitting in my lap. Um, but if I put her over there because we're filming, she's gonna start to scream. So I'm limited. But she's not panting, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it. Sandra, it's 3:10 a.m. here. My lovebird Blue is sleeping right now. Tomorrow he'll wake up at 8 a.m. Oh well, fun for you. So that means only a few hours of sleep for you then, huh? At the sanctuary, I am not a breeder. Oh, um, Bob. So he is at foster parrots. Foster parrots. Bob Kalo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, he made it clear that he was not a breeder. Um, yeah, uh, he, yeah, he used to volunteer at Foster Parrots. And thank you, Bob, for doing that. Volunteers save lives. Volunteers make a difference. And I always, you know, people that have had, that have not been around birds and they want to get bird experience or they can't have birds um, where they're at, but they want to be around birds. Volunteering is great. Finding a rescue sanctuary in your area if there's one and volunteering it, it's it's so awesome so rewarding and even if you can't go to the location if that's not you know something that they have set up um you can call them and see if there's something you can do online and you know there's things like writing thank you cards to donors that a lot of rescues don't have time to do that are really important um also internet stuff there's all kinds of stuff um that you can do uh, to help a rescue. My lovebird is watching with me right now. <laughs> what is your lovebird's name, the bird kid? I will I will shout out your yeah, bueno, I will shout out your lovebird's name. Hi, I am I, hi, I have been following you guys since you started. No, really? Whoa, that's Bueno, Jero Gomez. Thank you so much. That's a while. That's exciting. Thank you. Yeah, so we've got like 400 and something videos. I'm not even gonna try to remember. My brain's not working today. Um, yeah, that, well, thank you for following us. Uh, yes, that's awesome, that's awesome. See, so now she's like calmed down. You know, some of these birds, you just gotta like try to offer them things and yes, just get up, sit down, move them around and then they end up in the same place that they were getting nesty and now she's forgot about it which is so good. Oh, you guys, uh, my bird flew away yesterday. Oh no, I am so sorry to hear that. Did you put uh, the cage outside where your bird can see it 
with lots of treats um because that you know that'll work play bird sounds from a speaker from your phone go on youtube and find the same species of bird sounds and just blast it blast it don't give up and in the morning when the sun comes up right when that sun comes up be outside um that is like a really good time when things are quiet and you can hear your bird and at night before the sun goes down that's another good time to like get that speaker going uh when birds come back put signs up everywhere and most of all don't give up Oh, let's see, both of my birds died. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry to hear that. Oh, that makes me so sad. Well, that's a bummer. I'm really sad, that makes me sad when I hear that. I have a bird that is more, just came up on my uh, feed. Hello, April, hello, Janetta. Hello, April and Victoria and all the birds. I am so glad to be a part of this live. Oh, that's really sweet. I'm glad to see Victoria. Yes, she looks beautiful. Yes, look at that wing. And uh, God bless. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. What? What? Get a lot of action going. Wait over here. Thomas, look at that beautiful boy. Uh, Ramon rock videos. Yes, I have done all these things, but still is not coming home. Oh, let me tell you, do not give up because boy, right, Thomas, right? These birds, these birds, they are full of surprises and they are tougher than what we think they are. So you just keep looking. You just put those signs up everywhere on, on you know, freeway on ramps. You know, be careful. Don't cause an accident. Don't get ran over. But you can put a big sign up. Yes. And duct tape it. And you'll have those people come by and they'll take it down. Just put it up again. Coffee shops. That's a good place. Next to schools. Um, and, you know, one time somebody lost a Rosella. And I told them, put signs up. Do all you can. And guess who found it? The FedEx driver, because those are the people that are driving around, Amazon drivers, uh-oh, well that, shoot, here we go. Um, you know, people like that, that are out there, gardeners, those are the ones you want to approach and say, hey, have you seen my bird? And always offer a reward. Reward, I hate to say it, but rewards make a big difference. Huge, huge difference. Guizelle won't, uh, won't stop kissing me and doing her beat click dance. Oh my goodness. How cute. What is Thomas saying, April? Well, Thomas is saying bueno. He says bueno and no bueno. He speaks more Spanish than I do. Yes, he says hello, but right now, it's, it's I, everybody it calls him Mr. Bueno and he's regurgitating. Um, you know why he's regurgitating? Because once again, I wasn't paying attention. I was putting my face really close to him and I got him excited, so. I'm going to try to ignore that. Yes. Okay. Parrot 901 on Facebook is good. And kids, when they're out playing, yes. Is 911 Parrot Alert back up? Because I know it was down. Wow. I hope it's back up. That'd be great. Yes. 911 Parrot Alert is great. Is it normal for older birds to be less energetic? Well, you know, birds live a long time. And like Victoria Cockatoo is 49 years old and she's full of energy. I think Thomas is in his 30s. He's a rescue. <sighs> kind of, sort of. You, you know, if you notice that, what's going on? Hold on. Puffy, be nice to baby. I, I hear baby kind of screaming from pain. So what happens is um, Puffy uses and abuses baby. And so Puffy will have him preen him and you know preen him do all this stuff and then when baby wants to be preened puffy will attack him and be like no keep preening me it's it's uh i don't i don't understand their their uh, relationship but i think baby's in an abusive relationship to be honest with you and that makes me glad that they don't share a cage so i do have to supervise them because puffy which is the little one um i have to separate them sometimes when puffy's you know hormonal is when it happens beating up on baby so what, what was the question? I, I, once again, I got distracted. Oh, 
birds that are older having less energy. You know, if you notice that your Victoria just licked me. You see why I get distracted? If that doesn't distract a brain, I don't know what it is, your cockatoo licking you. It's so cute. Um, if your bird does look like it's slowing down, there might be something quite not right. It, it might not be getting enough nutrients. It might not be feeling well. Butts up again. Hold, but butts up again. Is this pushing the butt up or... You guys, there's so much going on. I can't keep up right now. Um, I always say it's good to take them for an examination just in case. Because sometimes there's something going on that your vet might notice. Or even with blood work, right? There can be a number of things. And if your bird is slowing down, for a bird to be slowing down um, and birds hide their illnesses, it could, you, you just don't know. That's a really tough question because I had Bailey the Kaique who was old, like she was a senior citizen. I don't think she was slowing down at all. In fact, I was just like, oh my goodness, this Kaique is almost 30 years old and she is attacking every single bird in this room and giving them a run for their money. Like she could outrun, outdo all these birds in here. So um, it wasn't till that last year uh, where she just, it was just, it was her time. My golfin is over 30 years. He acts as if he was young. Exactly, exactly. So there you go, there you go. There you go. And Victoria, she's 49, and someday she acts like she's so young. Come over here. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. You see, I got pumped. That's displaced aggression. When a bird reacts to someone else or something else and bites you, the nearest, nearest person to it. So, hold on. I'm having a hard time balancing this situation going on here okay and then the just jesse's being he's being great okay i love you vc she has such a strong will and a good life thank you for always fighting for her thank you oh hi lisa lisa greason's here lisa adopted what is it time flies so fast maybe six months ago a kayak named zorro and an elderly uh, senegal parrot and um so she's just amazing so her her house is very busy i'm sure having that kayak <laughs> boylan three hi april hello hello uh yes yes so you know someone made a comment and they were right this is something victoria is going to battle the rest of her life like she, she's never going to get better she's never going to get better that uh, jesse made that rude sound i didn't make that sound um, but I can manage it, right? So she has ovarian disease and we have to manage the disease. And so that's what we do. So that's why you will see ups and downs here at Parrot Playhouse. It's just what it is. And, um, you, you know, I like to, I like to show everybody what's going on, you know, with parrot ownership, the good and the bad. Parrot guardianship, I like to say, because we're their guardians. And I think that's something, you know, Don Scott shows it on his channel, The Chloe Sanctuary. That's something I think you don't see much of. And so I like to take you on the ups and the downs. And on these downs, when people see this, because, you know, I, I just, I, I'll take you into the hospital with us. You guys have watched procedures um, that my birds have had. And uh, remember baby's eye surgery? Oh, that was terrible. Oh my gosh, uh, if you haven't watched that video, you should watch it. Wow. Um, I think Puffy scratched baby's eye and it was this big surgery. Anyways, it was the first time it ever been done. It was, uh, it was wild and expensive, but it was worth it. <laughs> but you know, we take you through all that and that happens. Um, Cause fights do break out, they're wild animals. And um... oh my gosh, the timing of that. Good boy, if I only had a treat in my hand. Wow, I'll praise you with praise. <laughs> Did you, like really? That was funny. Okay, I think I was the one that thought it was funny. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> it was so funny. Okay, my kite is currently stuck in my hair. He always has to be doing something. Oh my gosh. Be so careful with a kite stuck in your hair because Maui got stuck in my hair 
and all of a sudden it was when my hair was curly and he started just cutting the curls out and all i i don't i've had to like really do this to it you guys i have a mullet now which is kind of in he took chunks of curls out just started cutting just i couldn't get them out of my hair and like i don't know they were quarter inch curls just falling out of my head so you know be careful because believe it or not these beaks are sharp and your kayak might turn into like Edward Scissors again, so yeah, good. Oh, and you have curly hair, yeah. Well, it'll give you more volume, how's that? Uh, Fat Parrots is here, hey Fat Parrots. Fat Parrots also has a YouTube channel. She's, oh, she's such a good artist. She does some of the artwork for Parrot Town. All right, Crazy Kaiks, yes they are. Scissor Kaik, oh my gosh, I love that. I'm gonna start using that. Um, okay, My Yellow Crown Amazon watches your videos. Really? Shaheem Joseph? That's so cute. I, I love that. I love that. That's great. That is so cute. Um, let's see. What else do we got? A, a Boiling Three. Some of the things you've said makes me wonder. They seem more aggressive than most uh, parrot species. Kaiks, they're, they're definitely territorial. Super territorial. And in the wild, you know, I've talked to somebody, I think it was Greta. Um, she says that, you know, they chase other parrots, you know, they're out there just having a good old time in the wild, chasing other parrots. They're kind of like the bullies on the playground, right? Puffy is definitely, sorry, Puffy. I'm always talking schmack about you. He is something, he is just like a little bully. Um, but I, they are just, they are wild animals. But I just, I just love it. But a lot of people, you know, they buy the Kaiks because they're so cute, right? They see all those hoppy videos. Oh man, you guys don't be careful with that because when they become sexually mature, they, they get super aggressive and they will start attacking like people, animals in the house. And you know, Bailey Kaik, who's no longer here, she passed away. She was a little elderly girl. She would attack anything that took attention away from her. So it doesn't matter if it was a, a little kid, a chihuahua, yes, um, somebody else. Like as soon as she saw that they were getting more attention, she would start getting like hoo 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 hoo. And when those hoo hoos hoo hoos got faster and faster and faster and faster, then the march, right? The march, and then you're just like, you know, her victims are thinking like, oh look how cute she is. They don't even know what's about to hit them. Bam! She goes, boom, grabs onto them, and it's just like, oh my gosh. I have a video. You're laughing. I have a video where I came home from work, and I was sitting with Victoria Cockatoo, so Bailey was already upset because Victoria was getting a lot of attention. And then I had the camera, which she would get so jealous of the camera. Boom! And I was filming her. I was, she didn't know I was filming her. That's the thing, I was filming her. So she starts marching in and does this circle, and I did this video with like the jaw sound. I wasn't expecting it, but she attacked my face and I fell back and that was the end of the video. And she won. It was, it was just, she was so funny. Oh my gosh. Their march looks so cute. I know, but it, boy, can it be deadly. My cockatoo, my cockatoo is the same. Now that's scary to have a cockatoo doing that. <laughs> I, I'd be scared. A genetic crumped in. April, how long have you had birds? And did you have birds when you were a child? Yes, I did. I have had birds when I was a child. And you're looking at that bird over there, baby, the the uh, the round yellow Amazon. I've had them since I was a kid, and um, we're gonna be together almost 30 years. So he's been in my life. So when I say birds are they're for life, I'm not joking. Like they are for life. And when you get a bird when you're a kid, I would not recommend it because, well, it keeps you out of trouble though, I have to say. Like, it keeps you out of a lot of trouble. Like, because I had to be home by a certain time, um, but then you're not doing all that other stuff, you know, like when you're a teenager or going, hanging out at friends' houses, cause you, you know, you gotta be home you gotta put your bird to bed, you gotta feed them dinner, you gotta wake them up, feed them breakfast, you gotta clean out their cage. It's not like, it, it's a, like you can't leave them in their cage for, you can't even leave them in the cage for 24 hours, right? They need attention, they need 
to be around people. They need fresh food. You got to change the water. The water gets dirty. I change water three times a day. So yeah, I mean, he kept me out of a lot of trouble actually, come to think of it. Maybe that's why my parents let me have him. I don't know. But the thing is, um, I got him when I was sick. I was being homeschooled. I couldn't go to school for a long time. And so I was really depressed. I was alone, I was depressed. This is no reason why anybody should ever get a bird. And I, I just, I didn't have any, I couldn't like hang out with my friends cause I wasn't well. And so I was having like different surgeries and stuff. And so I asked my dad, I saw a KPBS special, can I get a parrot? You know, I was so lonely. I just wanted something to talk to, someone to talk to. And I was like, I want a bird. I didn't know anything about birds. And he's like, he felt terrible for me. So he's like, okay. He's like, okay, you know, we didn't have much money then. And he's just like, here's 350 bucks, kid. You know, let's go see the biggest parrot you can get. I mean, we're talking years ago, you guys, years ago. This is before YouTube. Um, I don't know if Bird Talk was around then. You guys, there was like one book uh, for parrots back then. So there was a lot we didn't know. I have no clue how baby's still alive, to be honest with you. Um, but anyways, so I went in the pet shop. Yes, I bought him. I bought him and I don't think back then there was a parent crisis, but like I said, there wasn't any information really back then. And um, I gave the guy, I said, here's 250 bucks. What's the biggest bird I can get, right? I didn't know, I was a kid. And so they pointed this bird way in the back and he was the only bird that was padlocked, right? And he was in this cage, but he was big, right? I was like, whoa, my dad's like, whoa, that's a lot of bird for 350 bucks. But what my dad told me was, I had to get a bird. I had to come out of there with a cage and food, right? So, so we came out with a cage like this, right? And he was in there. It was baby, and then um, they had pretty bird food back then. And so I remember bringing him home. He was not in that cage at all, and that was not a cage, as I found out a week later. And then let me tell you, within a month, his situation we, it really changed. And my dad built this huge uh, tree, like what I got here for the birds. Built him a nice big tree and uh, out of manzanita. And then I ended up getting him a big cage. Um, it's actually, he got bigger than what he has right now. And I'm actually going to upgrade baby soon. Um, and so that quickly changed. And so I started learning. So within a month, um, I had fresh fruit, fresh vegetables. I was cooking for him. And... Um, I, you know, even then there wasn't much information after reading and, you know, my dad said, you know, we need to go to the library once we got him because all of a sudden he realized this was more than just a, right, dog or cat type of pet. Like, we had done something serious here. My dad was just looking at me going, oh man, you got to go to the library. And we didn't have, like, I didn't have the computer, you know, we're talking years ago. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it was no bueno. So, um, yeah, I went to the library and... Yeah, we just, that's how it started. It's crazy. I don't know how he's alive, to be honest with you. Um, BRB, Bubba is getting excited. He's getting excited. Woo, Bubba! Bubba! Uh, Cheryl, yeah, when I had my budgies as a youngster, there was very little info on caring for them. Yes. Boy, haven't things changed, though, um, now with info? I mean, really, there's no excuse. Um, not to have proper care for your parrots. There's no excuse. You, you know, I do these rescues and I see these people and you know, first of all, I don't think it takes education to know that a bird needs a clean cage. And it just blows my mind. You know, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna make a video on this. I've got some videos coming up. And I'm gonna try to make them kind of funny so I don't, you know, offend anybody. Um, I gotta be careful. So I don't wanna offend anybody. But, um, so you just see poop piled up on the perches and, ah, you know, I told you guys, you guys have seen my, some of my videos, I won't talk about it, but it, it's just gross, right? And you know, these birds, their feet are like their hands, you know, they're, they're eating with their feet and they're putting, you know, they're walking on these dirty perches, you know, and they're wiping their beaks, you know, when they eat and that food is getting on the, um, the tree or their perches and all that bacteria is growing. It's just like, holy Batmobile, you know, it just blows my mind. I, I It just does you don't need to read a book that that's not good. It's not good for anybody, right? You, you don't want to keep a, a fish in a dirty bowl and you don't want to be in a filthy house and, you, you know, you want things to be clean. You want things to be clean because 
when things are clean, there's less of a chance your birds are going to get sick and they're going to be happier, right, Jesse? And healthier. Um, yeah, so, uh, butter toast. I see these videos on YouTube of parrots in way too small cages with no toys, one perch, it's horrible, and if I say something, I'm wrong. Uh, I say a lot on here. <laughs> I get a lot of hate, but you know what? Somebody has to speak up and say something. Can you please show birds? I am so excited. Well, there's a bird right there. Uh, to, uh, let's see. Triassa's house. Triassa's house. So there's a bird right there. Here's a very relaxed bird right here. Oh, whoa, whoa. Let's get that. There's a bird stretching. That's an African gray. He's going to... Yeah. And... Oh, there's a sleepy bird, Victoria Cockatoo. Oh, look at that baby girl. Oh, she's so cute. On an average, how much time do you, oh, your parrots spend outside or in their cage, of their cage? A lot. Um, you know, I work. I, I make bird toys, parrotplayhouse.com bird toys, so I'm, you know, they can't be down there with me. So, and I'm using this all kinds of stuff. I, it's a separate place. And so I work and I'm also a hairstylist. And so, gosh, during the day, they, they sometimes could be in their cage for like five hours. But honestly, they're really not in the cage too much anymore, really. Um, cause I have aviaries outside. So when I'm working in the workshop, they're in their aviaries outside. So honestly, I don't like them to be in any more than five hours a day. Although sometimes there has been in the past where it was eight and that's where you really make that cage exciting. You put all kinds of fun things in there. Um, but bottom line is we all have to work and to support them. Oh, she just did like a little lick. And so that's why a nice big cage is super important with lots of toys and things to do. Life happens. That's perfect, Bubba the Bird. And, um, you know, you got to do your best. But you know what? I don't like to really, I don't go out, you guys. Like, my life is these birds. I don't have children. And um, they're the center of my everything. So, oh, you're at school. See, so, you know. Yeah, so I was in school when I had baby, but I was home. I was doing a lot of homeschool because I was sick. I'm at school, so I get them out every day for at least three hours. I try to aim for five. Well, that's good. That's good. You know, we got to do our best, and we just got to make those three hours count, um, right? We got to make, especially if you're in school. Do you have a plan when you go off to college for your birdies? Are you going to take them with you? That's why I became a hairstylist because I did not want to go off to college and leave baby. Like I had no desire to do hair. Look how cute. I like never like I wasn't one of those kids that had dolls or anything, right? Um I always had animals and I had no desire to do hair. But I went to beauty school cuz you could knock that out. What was it? 12, 13 months? And I didn't want to give up my bird. This is another reason why it's not a good idea to get a bird when you're a kid or get a bird for your kids. Like it, he really set the path for my entire future when I got him. Like I was not going to give him up no matter what, no matter what, I didn't care. So I customized my life for him. And then all of a sudden, 10 years later, you no. Know, so I was in my 20s when the Puff Man came. The Puff Man came, oh, look at that. And then his brother, Pierre, my Kayiks. And so I bought them as well. Um, I don't think there was a parrot crisis. Maybe there was, I didn't know. I wasn't involved with rescue, right? Um, there wasn't even YouTube then. Actually, when I got Puffy and Pierre, Pierre died of cancer, stomach cancer. I think it was like five years ago, it was terrible. And um, so those that that would, those would be the last two birds I would I'd buy, and then all these birds started to happen, you know, rescuing and yeah, I hear you, Quinn, I hear you, yeah, and um, you know, like gosh, it 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 just boom, I got thrown into the parrot crisis. Okay, so 
I saw, a th okay, I, I'm staying in the city and staying at home until I can afford my own small house. Aw, oh, well, that is great. So you're making plans for your babies. I love that. I love that. I know. Oh, being stretched. Wasn't that cute? There's a college here. That's wonderful. It's more affordable to go, go to college close to home anyway. These colleges are so expensive. See you later. Bye, Crystal. Um, I remember when there was no internet low. I remember that. Well, I remember that that dial-up thing where you had to plug it in. That was a nightmare. Like, I mean, there was internet, but there was no internet. See you later. Bye, Crystal. Have a good night or good morning wherever you're at. Um, yeah, we had something like that, and I never even made it through. I don't think I don't think that thing ever worked, right? I just remember playing that. Well, that, I don't think it was on the internet. That was like this little thing where you hit the ball back and forth. That was like the video game, right? And then there was Pac-Man, which was real exciting. And then when Mario Brothers came out, holy Batmobile! I didn't even know. What, I mean, I was limited. My parents didn't like let me play much, but I could barely contain myself. That was exciting. <laughs> I remember no internet too. I'm old. Hey, Wyoming Adventures. <laughs> yeah, I know. Talk about some dark ages. Look at this bird. So Jesse's stretching a lot. So I'm curious. Sometimes when birds stretch, it means they're tired. Sometimes it means they're nervous, right? They try to appear relaxed um, or they're bored. Something tells me, are you bored? Are you bored? Huh? Are you a little bored? Are you maybe a little tired too? Yeah? Huh? You didn't do anything with your cabbage. We'll have to save that for tomorrow. Yeah, that'll be your project for tomorrow, okay? Will you work on that for me tomorrow? Yeah? Will you do the cabbage? Yeah? You're so handsome. Yeah, so Jesse likes to peel each cabbage leaf at a time <laughs> while he makes dinosaur sounds. You love your cabbage? Yeah? He's so funny. So he'll get that cabbage tomorrow. Um, sometimes I give him sweet potatoes. Oh, now he's purring like a kitty. I, I just give him all kinds of stuff. I keep it exciting. Okay, uh, Jess. Oh, she has your name, Jessie. I call him Jess a lot. I call him dinosaur. I call him all kinds of names. Jess, I have two rescue babies and gotten nailed a couple times. Any advice on how to overcome fear? Of handling again after being bitten well let me tell you you guys some of you have watched Jesse nail me here on the live stream like hard it was right when I was going oh isn't he so sweet and precious oh he's so cute and boom so you got to figure out what happened when your bird bit you what was your birds trigger why why did your bird bite you right Jesse's trigger I'm scared to show He will, like, if I'm holding this thing, the dinosaur loses his mind with a remote. So that's why I'm not holding him because the remotes are, like, he can see. Look at that. Yeah. So he can see the remotes. Like, if I was to, like, hold him right now, I'd totally get bit. So you got to figure out what your bird's trigger. Why is your bird biting you? Um, why is your bird biting you? Is it the nail polish on your nails? Is your bird biting you because... The bird's territorial of the cage, which happens. That's like their, that's their home. So what I would do is teach your bird how to step up on a stick at first. And, and right here, just get, you know, these cheap dowels that come with the cage. They, they, oh, it's okay. Um, he's not scared of this. I don't know why he's doing that. Um, these are the cheap perches they give you. I don't ever use them, but I use them for step up sticks. And so teach your bird to step up on these sticks with a treat. And so get something that they really, really like. And if your bird is so aggressive and territorial where you can't hand them the treat, hand it to them on a spoon. So get that spoon with the treat. Um, actually, jiffy peanut butter. Don't get that natural stuff because they can actually choke on it. Just a little bit of peanut butter or a Nutri-Berry um, on the spoon and have them step up and first teach them how to take it from the spoon. That, that's, some, that's something in itself. So teach them how to take it from the spoon. Once they're confident with the spoon and they come to you and they take it nice out of the spoon, then teach them how to step up on the perch and give them the treat with the spoon. So we're, you're just trying to get them out of the cage and that could be a place why they're biting because they're so territorial, right? 
So get them a stand like this. These are like cheap. I should actually stick them at our Amazon store. I think these are like 65 bucks. And get, get them a stand and put them on the stand. And this is where you put stuff there. This is where you feed them, put all the goodies and stuff that they like and just get them away from the cage and then slowly start working with your hand. Now some birds just keep on biting and sometimes what you can do is wrap a little towel around your hand as well and slowly have them step up on your hand. But you have to make sure they're not scared of the towel like Thomas is, he'll have a seizure. He even sees a towel. He, he had a rough beginning before he came to Parrot Playhouse. And so you gotta make sure the bird's not scared. You, you just don't want the bird to be scared. Have them step on the towel. Give them, let them feel what it's like to move on a moving perch, your hand, right? Cause that's scary too. So first of all, you just gotta figure out why your bird bit you. You gotta figure that out. Did your bird bite you? Cause your hand was moving and the bird got scared or is it territorial? If you got two birds, are they defending each other? Are they, are, do they consider each other mates? So you might have to take one out of the cage, put it on a stand and put another one on a separate stand, right? Um, to make a breakthrough with that. So there's so many things that you can do, so many things to look at, but try that and baby steps, baby steps. Um, what do birds, why do birds pant when you cuddle them? Oh, that's a good question. So that's, that's a nesty thing. That's why I'm always, you know, telling people don't, um, be careful on cuddling birds, you know, I, it's not good. I, I, I know you see a lot of people cuddling the birds and I do sometimes too with certain birds, as long as they're not nesty, although you can trigger it and they can get nesty. So when they're panting, that's like basically they're getting excited. You're confusing them and they're thinking that you want to mate with them and then they want to mate with you. So you definitely do not want to do that with your birds because you know, some birds they get extreme you see how victoria's just sitting here so this is good some birds get extremely territorial when they decide that you're their mate they will start attacking everybody in the house so you want to really be careful about stimulating them like that and they can also turn on you so there she goes i'm just going to kind of ignore it and they can also turn on you so you really want to be careful with that cuddling thing i know like in our mind we think it's like something sweet and cute and you see a lot of it on YouTube but boy it can be a real problem it, whether you have a male or female and it can make them sick you know they can start laying eggs and you don't want these captive birds laying eggs because that's where they can you know the egg can get stuck inside of them all kinds of problems and then the next me you know they're having to have it surgically removed and you're out six thousand dollars like so you just got to be careful so when that little cluck 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 starts you know put the bird down Give them something to play with. How should uh, prevent that? Be, so be careful where you pet your bird. Just pet on the head. Don't wrap it up in blankets. Don't let them, you know, play in dark places. You know, I don't let Victoria just run around here. I really don't let my birds just run around on the floor because they can get stepped on. Oh, sorry, Victoria. But then they try to hide in places. And like today, she was trying to hide in places. So nasty. So she was trying to get on that floor. I would not let her get on the floor. I took her outside and I let her walk around. That picture on her thumbnail is from her walking around, getting some sunshine. And she is protected with netting above so she can't fly away. Nothing can fly in on her. Um, so I'm always careful like that. I always like to tell people my birds just aren't walking around outside because, you know, something could happen to them. So you always got to protect them. Yeah. Yeah, people belly rubbing birds, but what they think is the belly is the vet. Yes. So, you know, they're they're touching under here, touching under here. It's it's very confusing for these birds. Don't beak wrestle either. Yes. And boy, am I guilty of beak wrestling sometimes. I'm with Puffy. And, you know, I do grab beaks. And that does sexually confuse them. Thank you so much for putting that up there. And pulling their tail. And that's something the mate does in the wild. As you can see when Baby and Puffy were, you know, preening each other back there. That's something, you know, the mate does as well. Baby and Puffy, they consider each other uh, mates. Even though they're different species, um, they're both boys. You know, birds in captivity, they try to figure out what... They, they try to find mates and they try to find out... Do they just try to like, I don't know, make things as normal as it can be. Cause they're not in the wild so they try to just follow their instincts 
And that's why you'll see sometimes a Kaik bond with a yellow, a yellow nape Amazon. Um, but I don't let them share cages because somebody really could get injured. See, there they go again. It's raining. Oh my gosh. How nice. Oh, well, you guys, I think, yes, don't let their cuteness trick you. You guys, that's where I'm always like, man, these guys are wild animals, no matter um, how we look at it. it it's kind of like, you know, how people have pet tigers and chimpanzees, you know, all that crazy stuff. And then they're surprised, you know, when the chimpanzee rips half of the face off. You know, that one woman, you know, everybody was like shocked by how it, why it happened, you know, whatever. And then but she got a new face. But um, anyways, you know, that's a wild animal. You just never know what they're going to do. And, and the same with these guys. They're wild animals. And, you know, as much as we call them our children and, uh, you know, you know and these cuddles or whatever, we also have to remember that they're wild animals and that they're going to do things that are unpredictable. And when they do like bite, you know, we don't want to get our feelings hurt. Um, we don't want to take anything personal and birds don't hate. You know, I see a lot of people like my bird hates me or my bird is angry at me. Bird, birds don't hate. They don't get angry. They get territorial. Um, they get scared and frightened. Another reason why birds will bite. Right. Um, so, you know, we got to figure out why they bit at that time. And then we got to fix the problem right away before it becomes a bigger problem and then it becomes a learned behavior and the bird just starts biting and biting and before you know it your wild animal is just out of control and you can't get your wild animal out of its cage and you know life for the bird and you it just goes down and you know it, you just feel terrible like you failed this wild animal um but they're wild animals so it, it can be hard keeping them happy and healthy in captivity and I just, I still feel like I don't do enough. How do I get my bird to eat her veggies? I've tried a lot of different vegetables and she just gets mad and starts to throw them. Um, you know, those kebabs, you can get kebabs. They're, they're stainless steel kebabs. You can put the veggies on that or you can get a chopper, chop them super, super fine. You can also, if you have, if your bird's a seed eater, um, you can sprinkle some millet in those vegetables that you chopped really fine so when the bird's going for the millet they're getting some of those vegetables but you can't let that sit for long right because it'll go bad and the millet is just to train your bird to eat vegetables and then take that millet away eventually that's what i would do and, and that's what i've done christine's chop shop will help uh transfer them yes christine's chop shop will help transfer them and um I actually have uh, the common crackers here. Is that the common crackers? Yeah, common crackers. Look at her. Um, and so she makes freeze-dried vegetables and um, dehydrated vegetables. And you just wet them. And actually, that's what Jesse's also has in his food today. And that really helps. And I'll mix that with quinoa. Thank you for mentioning that. I was just going to say fine chop. Yeah. ChristineChopShop.com. And oops, no. So this is a, um, these are calming crackers. They're great for when birds are stressed and it calms them. But Christine puts all kinds of incredible ingredients. Um, mince and mix with what the fit eat veggies and Bubba and Montego love. Christine Shop Shop, yes. Yes, so yeah, I see there you go, butter toast. You got some good suggestions there. I'm so glad you asked that question. You know, sometimes you don't feel ever be scared to ask a question because I bet there's someone that's also wondering that question. So I love it when people ask questions. But yeah, so there's different ways you can do that. Well, you guys, I got to end the stream. I just realized we've been streaming almost for an hour and a half and it's probably so late. I got to give Victoria her medication. I got to stay on that Meloxicam. And then, so the next time we see you, she'll have gotten her implant in. So definitely keep those positive thoughts and prayers going. We really appreciate it. She's licking my hand. And um, they just really help. I really appreciate it, you guys. We just love you so much. We're so thankful for you. Aren't we, Thomas? Yeah. Bueno. Yeah, we're, oh, you guys are amazing. I know I don't, like, answer all the comments. I just had my hands full here. Uh, but I'm, I'm, like, looking at them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Achu. Um, 
it, it, it's like I, they mean so much. So I feel bad. I try to hurt them at least. But when I start doing that, I like start writing these long sentences. And oh my gosh, you know, two hours later, my, and then you know, my birds need. But I thank you so much. All right, we love you, you guys. Maui is over there falling asleep. Wow, these birds have been so good, so good. Quinn's still eating his dinner, and yeah, okay. All right, good night, good night. Thank you so much for watching, hanging out with us, and um, VC strong. Baby girl, we love you guys. Bye. Yeah, bueno. Bye. Okay, how do we hit the button? Okay, there we go. All right, guys. Good job. Yeah. Bueno. you did so good. Okay, let's give you your medicine, baby girl. You're such a good girl. Yeah, you guys, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. You were so good. Yes. Okay, let's go over here. You guys make me so proud. I'm so proud. Yes, you do. Somebody wanted to know. What oh, 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 wait a minute. Why are we still on this thing? Oh, I did it again. Hold on, baby girl. Hold on. Sorry, I startled you. I just realized you're still streaming. I left the TV on, the t and we're still streaming. Hold on, good lord! I am like, I, with this internet thing. Good lord! Okay, sorry you guys. Good night. I'm gonna um. Wow. Okay, we love you. <laughs> I, I'm just a dork that doesn't know how to work, you know, uh, these live streams, right? Okay. Good night. I'm like so embarrassed right now. Okay, bye. <laughs>